Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can map locations on a map using Google Drive and Map a List. You may be aware that when Google Drive was Google Docs, there was a feature that you could use in worksheets and that was a map feature. It was a gadget. You went to insert and then there was a gadget option and you could create a map from data in a worksheet. Now those gadgets have all been depreciated and many of them have been reinvented as Google Docs or Google Drive charts. Unfortunately, the map option just went by the wayside and there is no way to turn a Google Drive worksheet into a map the way that we used to be able to do it. Now those maps were really handy for doing things like blogging or for businesses to show the locations of their offices and so on. So what I found to be a really good alternative to the now not available maps is a tool called MapperList. Now MapperList is a website that allows you to create maps from Google data. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create one. So I'm going to start up and register with MapperList and we're going to get going with it. But for now, let's start by looking at the data that we need. So you'll need to go to Google Drive and create a brand new worksheet. I've just called mine restaurants. You can call it whatever you like. What I'm doing here is plotting the data or creating the data for a plot of some restaurants that I have visited recently. I go out to breakfast once every month with a friend and we've been writing reviews of the restaurants that we've gone to. And so what I've got here is a series of columns in the worksheet with the addresses and some information about the locations that we've eaten. So there is a column for address and one for city, although you could have a second address. There is provision in Mapper List to use a second line address if you need to. You'll need the state, the zip code and the country of the location that you're trying to plot. You can also have GPS data, but you don't need it. So effectively, if you know a street address and this sort of regular postal information, you can plot this location on a map. There are two additional columns here. One of them is for title and that's going to be the title that appears when you hold your mouse over a location. You can see here that the restaurant titles are what are appearing there because I've got this title column here and I've tagged that as being the thing that I want to show when you hold your mouse over the pointer. Now there's a second field that you can use and what I did originally was just put in the date that we visited the location. But then as I'm starting to complete the blog posts from those breakfasts, I thought it would be a really good idea if we would link back to the blog post. So for the blog posts that I've already created, I have added here instead of just the date, I've added a HTML tag. It's just an anchor tag. This is the text it's anchored around. Read our October 2013 post and this is the anchor. It's a bog standard HTML piece of code. So we've just got href equals and in quote marks is the URL of the blog post that I want to link to. I'm using target equals underscore blank. You can see it here because that will open the link in a new browser window. So if you're in any way familiar with HTML, this is going to be simplicity itself for you to write and you just shove all that data inside this cell in the Google Drive worksheet and I've got a second one here exactly the same. So now that I've got my Google Drive worksheet all created, let's go to map a list and let's see how we will register, set up the link back to Google Drive and then go ahead and create our new map. I've gone to the website mapperlist.com and this is the tool that we're going to use to create the map from our Google Drive data. So I've actually just completed the registration form and I'm just going to submit it. All you need is a username, a password, your email address and a security question and postcode. So I've just done that and the account has been completed so I'm going to continue. And I have a Gmail or Google account. So I'm going to select this because I want my data to come from a Google spreadsheet. So I'll click continue. And I want to give it access to my Google Docs account. So I'm just going to grant access. Click 
click Grant Access again, and it can now get into my Google Docs account or my Google Drive account. Now, I was already logged into Google Drive, so that probably helped the process. If you need to, you might have to give it your email address and password to get into Google Drive, but I'm in there now. So now I can use the restaurants worksheet that I created earlier as my map source. So I'm going to choose my map source. I'm in the create new. I'm going to choose the source type and that's going to be a Google spreadsheet. Then I get to select the spreadsheet and a list comes up of all of the spreadsheets that I have. And the one I'm looking for is restaurants. So I've clicked on restaurants and then I can select a worksheet in case there are multiple sheets, but I've only got one sheet here. It's sheet one. And then we can see the data here. So we're actually seeing that there are 12 records and it says if you are expecting more, make sure you don't have any blank rows. So everything's looking pretty good so far. So I'll click next. Now I need to identify which data columns contain which address fields. They want to know where the first line of my address is, but because I called that field address, it's already pre-populated. So if you're smart with the headings on the columns here with address, city, state, post, zip code, country, etc., then MapperList's just going to pick those up for you anyway. I don't have a second line address, so I'm just leaving that blank. My city column is contains the city information. My state column contains the state information. My column called zip code contains the zip information. My column called country contains the country. Now I don't have GPS data. I don't have latitudes and longitudes. That's just fine. We're just going to ignore that. This is the data in those additional two columns of the worksheet. That's the title, the place that we visited, and then the blog post or a date, depending on whether or not the blog post is live yet. So I'm going to put the title field in the title of that pinup that's going to appear. And the additional info, I want to be the blog post column. That's the one that contains the data. So I've selected that there. I'm going to click apply to commit those settings and then next to continue to the next step. Now the program goes ahead and tries to acquire the geocodes, the mappable latitudes and longitudes for those addresses. In other words, if your addresses are good and it can find those locations on the map, it's going to find them, process it, and then it's going to tell you, yes, that's fine, addresses for all the records were acquired. If you didn't get the addresses for all the records, then you might need to go back and redo your address data in your worksheet to see if you can make it more accurate so that it can be mapped. But I've not had any problems so far with just pretty much standard street addresses. I'm going to click Next. Now I need to choose the map type. I'm just going to choose the map type all addresses and I just want to preview my map for now. And I need to wait as the map is rendered for me. And here's my map. And we can view it and we can hold our mouse pointer over any of these locations and we can click to see what this is all about. And this is the link to our October 2013 post. If I click that, it will open in a brand new browser window. So my hyperlinks are working just fine. I notice that I've got a accented character here in Redwood Cafe's name. I will need to change that in my data later on. But for now, I'm just going to settle for what I have here. Now I do have a pin image option here and I could change my pin to any one of a number of different pins. So we could create or we could use any one of these pins. So let's just change the color for today. Let's make it yellow. So I'm going to click yellow as my pin and then go again and preview my map. And you'll see that the pin image has now changed from green to yellow. The map is just being rendered and here it is. So we've got our map. Let's go to next. Now we need to set up what we want the map to look like. So I'm going to put in a map name.
and then I'm going to put in a location. Now I want my map to be centered on a specific location. So I'm just going to go and grab one of these street addresses which would be a good location to center around. I'm thinking this one will be it. So I'm just going to paste that in here. That's about the middle of the mappable area. That's pretty much dead center where I want the map to be. The default map view, I just want to be normal, but I do want to be quite zoomed in. And I think probably a zoom of about six. Now in the map footer, I get a choice of images only, images and text or minimal. I want as little information on the foot of my map as possible. Public or private, I obviously want this map to be public because I want it for my website. Auto update, there are some options here for refreshing the map or not refreshing the map. And then there are map points key and things that you can select here. I'm not going to worry too much about this, but what I do want to do is save and view my map right now. And I'm saying that the zoom is not big enough. So I think I probably need to go to about an 11 zoom. Let's see how that looks. It's pretty good. Maybe 10 would be the better of these options, but I'm just going to click until I get the zoom so that the map is pretty much centered and so that you can actually see the individual points. If I did a zoom of, for example, one, you'll see that we're zoomed right out with the map and it's just not meaningful. So I really want this to be zoomed in quite a ways. And really that's probably the thing you're going to spend most of your time on is working out where you want the map center and what you want your default zoom to be. If you're happy with that, then your map is complete and you're ready to go ahead and now get the code for your website. So now that my map is complete, I'm ready to go ahead and put it on my website. So because I've got save and view, I've already done that. It's been created. So I'm going to close this and go back to creating a new map because I want to get back to the starting point. Now let's go to view and now we can view our map. So from the drop down list, we can select any of our maps to view. I've only got one map and that's this map here. And what I want to do is to share it because what I want is the link, the iframe link here that allows me to embed it in my website. So what I'll do is just select this code here and copy and paste it into my website. So that's how you would then get a list like this or a map like this, this is going to show on your website. This is just the iframe code that we copied from that share dialog and it's pasted into a blogger blog post. So I think that you'll find that this is a really cool application to use to plot data on maps. It's unfortunate that Google took away the map option, but I think MapperList has given us something that is fairly easy to use. The maps are very easy to understand. Once you've made your first map, you'll find that it's fairly simple to create. And I hope that you enjoy this application and that somehow it fills the gap that Google made when it removed the map feature from Google Drive. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more tutorials on this YouTube channel and consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a whole range of applications, including Google Drive.